various kinds of things with different GAN models behind it. So text, code, image, speech, video, 3D, and other stuff. Now, the next topic I'm going to talk is large language models. So what are these and, and why they're important and how they are built and what we should understand from the management leadership or entrepreneur point of view. So this is a landscape um, up till 2023, and this is growing exponential, uh, not multiplier. So every company, including Apple, announced that they are now working on their own large language model. So it started in 2019, where even I got involved around that with OpenAI. Uh, they used to call Jim some or Jim model. From there, uh, 2024, uh, we have 2023 uh, ChatGPT4. So you can see how they are growing. Uh, T5, GPT3. Uh, I'm not going to read all of them, but this is the landscape of large language models. So what, what does this large language models? They are pre-trained uh, machine uh, AI models, which are pre-trained. And what you do is you tap into these models uh, to get uh, to in a prompting way or, or other, for other ways to, you can tap into this large language models, fine tune for your own application building. So what effects and what makes the large language model what affects the large language model? Their efficiency or, or, or the value is considered based on the number of features it has been trained on. So feature engineering is something very fundamental to machine learning or AI. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good afternoon and good evening, whichever part of the world you are joining from. Uh, we have a very high volume of sign up, uh, especially people coming from overseas. Uh, Dubai, Saudi Arabia, Middle East, um, Africa, we get all this kind of uh, requests. So I'll wait for one, one more minute uh, before I get started. But uh, the format for today webinar, I will, uh, I will, if you guys can see my screen and hear me, please uh, just raise your hand so that I know I'm audible. Good, thank you. Um, thank you for the acknowledgement. So the format of the webinar will be, uh, I'm going to present a few topics. Um, um, it's very hard to speak to, uh, speak without knowing some concepts. So I'm going to quickly run through some basic concepts. What's Gen AI, what's prompting, what's LLM, and how to look at this from, from an enterprise and startup point of view. And uh, throughout the webinar, what I'll do is I'll prompt Q and A, where you can uh, where you can ask questions around it, and uh, um, you can also put the questions in the chat. So as I'm speaking, I will um, yeah. Can you give some background on? It? That's a good good one to start with. So I will give you all that uh, in coming slides, basically. So you'll see all of it, but the format of presentation will be, I'm going to do some introduction of technology, then give you a prompt for Q&A, and you can drop some questions here, and uh, and we keep going. I may answer while I'm speaking, but towards the end, I will give solid uh, somewhere between 20, 15 to 20 minutes, and it can go more, where you can ask as many questions as you want, uh, our knowledge and our work starts when we share uh, information with each other. So that's the motivation and that's the goal for today. So it's already 1.04, so I'll, I'll get started. And please, if you can mention your name while, while asking questions, that becomes very, very helpful for me to address you guys. So today's focus is uh, generative AI for business. And uh, we, we have our... Uh, what you call, we want to now, uh, we call AI sense making redefined. Since AI has moved forward a lot from, from the days we started and, and from, it has gone ahead, right? And bottom line is that. So we are looking at $15.7 trillion economic shift uh, in this industry by 2030. This is from McKinsey and PwC. Uh, very, um, very, very exciting. Um, uh, very exciting time for people who are trying to do some uh, some 
some kind of a work in terms of education, learning, growing together. So this is our team, very diversified team. Uh, I'm very proud to bring almost uh, possible every nationality and <laughs> every race in the in the in the room. This is our office. We are based in 2400 Barranca Parkway uh, in Irvine. So we are very local. If you are from Southern California or, or around here, uh, you can always stop by uh, at our office and meet us too in person. But these are some credibility. Uh, for TDM. Uh, TDM has been in business since 2015. Uh, we build a couple of uh, products and services. Uh, personally, me, I'll talk about my background. I had two uh, AI-based startups, which I had an exit. And TDM has been existing since 2015, um, and it has done multiple things. One of the things we do is uh, B2B, B2C, and, and you know P2B building platforms. Uh, we are top rated uh, in multiple rating organization. Uh, we take pride with, we help US Navy, General Electric, couple of the big, uh, big companies. This is my background. Uh, my name is Ashad Khan. Uh, I am a computer science and electrical engineer. I have been in this space for more than 20 years. Before I become entrepreneur, I was with Bank of America and Yahoo doing the same thing at an enterprise level. Um, Dev Masters, as I said, was started in 2015, uh, uh, founded by me, and my specialization is AI from the college days, but it was statistical modeling. Uh, later on, I went to Cecil Labs at MIT, uh, Computer Science and AI Lab to upgrade myself into deep learning and other stuff to get latest. And in 2015 and 2016, again, when I become entrepreneur, and then went to business MIT Business Salon, um, uh, for my uh, business education. So today we will focus in, 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 in a very simplified way. We'll try to understand uh, Gen AI from the leadership perspective. Then we'll try to understand some key fundamentals, especially if, if we have to make a decision, lead an organization, or even if you're trying to build an application, knowing some fundamentals is helpful. And then we'll look around uh, what does this mean for the leadership model? Uh, and how to make those decisions, and then best practices in industry. And I'm going to show you the applications which we have built and, and um, use cases around that and the platforms we are putting together. So as I said, this is desi designed for all three persona. If you are a business side person who is a super user, operations head, and you want to reinvent your organization in multiple ways that you will get those concepts. For entrepreneurs who are building some new application or modifying and trying to use Gen AI for their own needs and expert level, even if you are a data scientist and AI professional from past or a CTO, CIO uh, or CEO who is who's leading an organization, how, how you pivot uh, knowing this technology. So it's designed for all three. Uh, just uh, hang on till towards the end because you'll get a lot of information and I will keep prompting the Q&A. Uh, overall, uh, it will be a fun ride. So let's start with Gen AI. What is Gen AI? Gen AI is, is uh, a, subset of, uh, a subset of deep learning, and it is, a, it is from the discipline of uh, artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence is broken down mostly into machine learning, which got very popular. Then we have deep learning, and then now generative AI. So how this is different, let's look at it. In deep learning, the comparison I'm going to do is deep learning versus generative AI. And I will show you a little bit of ML side too. So in deep learning, we had a discriminative technology which we have built, where we are able to basically say, is it a cat or a dog? Those kind of uh, classifiers we are building. Till the generative AI came. In generative AI, we are able to train the models on unstructured data and is able to uh, generate some new content. So let's look at this uh, machine learning output. Uh, you have a label output and you get a label uh, prediction. Um, in generative AI, you have a pattern of unstructured content and your output is uh, another content. Like for example, in chat GPT, you prompt uh, text content it understands it and gives you a text output. 
Uh, you have a lot of GAN models which does cross cross things to text to image. We'll talk more detail, but this is at the uh, at the basic level. That's what GenAI is doing. This is a landscape of generative AI. So it does various kinds of things with different GAN models behind it. So text, code, image, speech, video, 3D, and other stuff. Now the next topic I'm going to talk is large language models. So what are these and, and why they're important and how they are built and what we should understand from the management leadership or entrepreneur point of view. So this is a landscape. Um, up till 2023 and this is growing exponential uh, not multiplier so every company including apple announced that they are now working on their own large language model so it started in 2019 where even i got involved around that with openai uh, they used to call jim sum or jim model from there uh, 2024 uh, we have 2023 uh, chat gpt4 so you can see how they are growing. Uh, T5, GPT-3, uh, I'm not going to read all of them, but this is the landscape of large language models. So what, what does this large language models? They are pre-trained uh, machine uh, AI models, which are pre-trained and what you do is you tap into these models uh, to get uh, to in a prompting way or, or other for other ways to you can tap into this large language models fine tune for your own application building. So what effects and what makes the large language model? What effects the large language model? Their efficiency or, or or the value is considered based on the number of features it has been trained on. So feature engineering is something very fundamental to machine learning or AI. Uh, which helps us to do the right prediction and right configuration for, for the AI prediction part. So let's look at what, what does this parameter uh, increase uh, means. So if you have a 350 million parameter to 750 to 20 billion, you can see how this image has been processed and how beautiful and better it is as number of uh, parameters we use for training these models. So now let's look at how 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 large language models and how many features they have been uh, using uh, parameters to train. It has gone to now from billions to trillions now uh, by 2024. So GPT, uh, GPT-2 was 1.5 billion. Uh, GPT-2 was 1.5 billion. Uh, GPT-1 was seven, 117, 20 billion. So GPT-4 is undisclosed, so that that's surprising. There's uh, some some of them are 17, 20 billion. So now you understand the power of uh, of the large language models are based on uh, based on the parameters involved in the training phase. So one of the things you want to when you make a decision, how powerful is the model? So basic things to look at is this way. Plus you will test and program obviously. These are some popular ones, OpenAI, uh, Google Palm, DeepMind, uh, whatever your customer, uh, your, your needs are based on that, you can, you can drive this. Uh, we took very extensive interest in building a medical bot, bot so these are some uh, medical uh, popular large language models. Uh, MedPalm uh, recently was released. Uh, this is trained on T5, uh, which was a language translator model. So now they took this medical, Google took this medical terms and retained T5 to call MedPalm and look at the improvement uh, from December of 2022, uh, PubMed, which was 50.3% to 86.5%. It's able to qualify a lot of uh, medical exams and, and uh, possibly beat a lot of, uh, uh, you know, theories around medical. So that's what it is. Now, the next topic we're going to talk is GPT. So what is GPT? Uh, there's a confusion between chat GPT and LLM. So that's why I need to be clarified. They are generative pre-trained transformers. What does GPT stand for? So what does it mean? Uh, you are seeing Ch chat GPT as one of the very pioneer, uh, which we all are using. Uh, they are pre-trained uh, uh, transformers, which you'll say it more as Mode. So let's look at between GPT and ChatGPT. So GPT is a large language model 
and chat gpt is an application on top sitting on top of large language model that's what i wanted to a little bit clarify here for someone who is a super user and it has a large neural network gpt with 100 billions of parameters so we saw what are the parameters now uh, on the chat gpt side you have a dialogue way to prompt which is prompting as a content filter and gives you uh, a response in terms of text um, so it's an application on gpt now this is where the magic starts and this may be a little bit uh, involved technically so generative uh, artificial intelligence uh, there are two kinds you can look general generative general purpose one and the task specific uh, uh, generative intelligence task specific can be also taken as different kind of transformer GAN, GAN models which are generative adversary network uh, variational and auto encoder diffusion models and flow models this is going a little bit deeper than normal i go to but if you are looking to build up an application uh, in gen ai so these concepts will help you to think better as well as make the right decisions So let's understand the, the fundamental behind this, uh, this technology. They are called GAN. Uh, so GAN are um, generative and discriminative neuron network which compete with each other. So the basic uh, function of GAN is there is one neuron network which is a generator and one neuron network which is a discriminator. So a generator consider random value as an input and discriminator is trained along knowing that input is true or not. It is trained as a classifier to give you a, a, a binary output, yes or no. When it does give you an output, it also have a loss function which feeds back to generator and generator will learn from it and move on to create new input for discriminator to be uh, re, re challenge the discriminator. So let's look at this concept. What is happening now we have two a neuron network generator is taking a fake image for example it wants to create a cat image it assume that a vector which is a data input that this is a cat it gives to the discriminator discriminator is already pre-trained to know is is cat or not cat so it will say it's real or fake at highest level this is how it works but let's look at how they interact now so the first attempt of generator is okay, it got some kind of an input in imagery CAD data, which is a vectorized uh, data and said to the discriminator, this is a CAD, discriminator says no, this is not a CAD, but it, it gives a loss function back to the generator. The generator is sketch it again, create some new data uh, with his uh, ability. And then discriminator says, no, it is not a CAD, but it shows a loss function to generator and finally generator is able to come make an imaginary cat which is very close to discriminator cannot say that this is not a cat and it wins so this is how the GAN works behind uh, behind the scene so you take an imaginary input you put to the gener uh, uh, generate for example you want to generate a fake hundred dollar bill you generator will generate a fake hundred dollar bill but discriminator know that this is not a real bill and it will reduce give back the loss function and generator will keep challenging it and at the end generator ends up winning or equal so a new content is generated so in probability theory this is what uh, uh, pg is the generation and uh, pr is the dis distribution of the real image so generator goal pg in probability they wants the distribu this distribution to be very similar to the to the realistic image so almost generator will be able to mimic what the discriminatory probability is there the goal is to approximate the pg to pr distribution so now let's look at how to build application around this technology there are various kind of GANs. I'm not going to go all through, but you, I'll show you some, some examples. This is called cycle GAN, where you are able to swap 
a zebra versus horse um, and these are all scientific papers how to do it uh, there are text to image generators which is BERT also you put in text image it will be able to uh, make an image uh, you can generate fake fake <laughs> fake create fake human beings uh, this is to generator and discriminator model uh, pose you can take an image uh, uh, a picture and and you know try to create different poses rather than having a model to take various with 3d uh, 3d object generation which is becoming very popular we recently got a request from a company in latin america to do some work around here that was very exciting uh, application is game theory uh, music art you create tons of application using GAN models stable diffusion this is one of the things uh, which i want to talk about so um, you see here you know these are all imaginary character and imaginary objects which are uh, which are been created and you can see a cat eating trying to eat a, eat a piece of a chicken and as well as dog trying to eat but it's the same it's a data manipulation more than creating the real image we'll see more details so i'll go a little bit more this is the third box is called diffusion models that's what you saw in the last slide and so i'll explain it a little bit more so this are the basic three models uh gan which we talk about discriminative and generative then there are vae encoder and decoder model and then flow models which can take reverse your image cycle gan and all those things and diffusion models are it can go forward backward change the background make it small big fill the gaps those kind of things diffusion model one of the example is we create fake images which we have built application a real person does not exist but with generator and discriminator and diffusion model competing you can create a have a have a person which does not ex exist so in this one diffusion model trains human faces can generate a new face with unique features the model transform simply distribute into complex to reversible operations. So this is a uh, diffusion models. Let's look at VAN, VA, uh, variant encoder decoder. Best way to explain is when you are at airport and you see uh, you have put something which airport uh, uh, does not like this, uh, their system. Um, and it detects that your bag need to be rechecked. Uh, this is anomaly detection uh, using um, a variant auto auto encoder models it is also like it can anomaly detect it can detect something uh, which is out of the place in this case you see if the fish is going in one direction but the red one is going in another direction it goes an anomaly just to give you a very high level understanding so that we can build our thinking better flow models now flow models are semantic data generation you can say so the simplest way i explain semantic and synthetic is uh, you have piano you have a guitar and you have a drum all these three music can be mixed and new music can be created so that is semantic data generation so data piece adding semantics smoothing integration and new data and content is generated out of it Another concept which we need to know, which will be uh, required for us to understand in terms of building application, synthetic data generation. So you have this, this has solved a lot of big problems in industry, especially for mid-sized and small companies like us. Data was one of the biggest challenge since doing this for a very long time. So now you have original data, you can take partial data and you can have a full data synthetically created. It is a combination of various rows and columns using some probability combination. I used to call computationally statistical data generation method. Now it's tagged as a, a synthetic data generation. So for example, you have a credit card fraud system and you have uh, people approaching certain level of companies from let's say Asia. Can you take that data and replicate in US? Yes, you can by doing some kind of semantic adjustment you can take this experiment and run it here and test your models rather than going and um, gender asking new kind of data from anyone the other big use case uh, is in the medical it's crazy um, 
with HIPAA compliance and everything, uh, we were not able to do a lot of good experiments because of we don't have enough data. Now you can do diffusion models, you can do semantic set, uh, synthetic data generation and take one MRI and produce it in thousand ways with different age group, different bone density, uh, different kind of parameters been, been changed. So you can build models around that very quickly. And you can feed the real data and see how good it is. So these are the power of uh, GAN and how, how it helps us to, you know, help us to uh, speed up our, our development process. Synthetic image generation, as I was saying, we have used it in our experiment too. So these people, human beings, they do not uh, exist, but with using cycle GAN, uh, we are able to create uh, some mix human beings. You can mix also two human beings and have a third phase or take an imaginary data set and process it and create a, a human being out of it. Last concept is uh, prompt engineering. Uh, this is also required in terms of understanding how large language models are built and how to process them throughout this, uh, uh, this either as a super user, as an entrepreneur or someone who's building the application. I'll keep it very simple. Uh, there are three kinds of concepts here. Prompt design, prompt engineering, and prompt template. Now, prompt design is you build a prompt to get into large language models. And you can either physically submit it, some applications allow you to submit the whole document and take the intelligence out of the document and keep working on it. Prompt engineering is where you are intelligently writing some sentences to the chat GPT. It takes, we call word to vect. So, so the first sentence will be converted to vector. And if you get sequence of sentences, it falls into word embedding. So it find out sentence A, sentence B, sentence C correlationship and make a semantic understanding of what those correlationships are to go to the LLM and get a very intelligent response to it. There's no, um, for a very super user, there's no, uh, what you call, it's a probability uh, theory which is working and predicting the next word rather than the way our neurons work in our brain. There's no cognitive, it's all mathematical responses. Uh, template, prompt template. Um, this is for the people who are building applications. So when you tap into um, large language model, you need to do some kind of a um, getting in and getting out process. So you will define what your request will be sent and how it will be sent in what tone, what language, how many parameters. And when it gets the response, what kind of response you want to bring back. So this, uh, this is done when you build a large language model application. So for example, you want to limit uh, some, some uh, ethical consideration. You don't want bad words to be going or coming out of uh, a large language model, or you don't want bad personality to be passed, bad content to be passed to your large language model. You can have the filter and the prompt template. And when it responds, you can say, this content is machine generated. It's not to be used for medical or any advice. Those kind of things you can control here and more. You can also set up an example uh, which which it can learn from and, and tap into the large language based on certain examples. So if normal user may be prompting whatever it feels right, you can control a lot in the prompt template design. I get a lot of questions around um, how to do a efficient prompting. Um, I assemble something quickly, a um, uh, long time when I was giving a talk on prompting, but uh, it's, uh, you have to assume it like a like a personal assistant and give a very detailed step-by-step -step instruction and follow up. Uh, basically, chain summarizing. If you are a super user, there is a limit to, to the response and limit to the input taken. So you can find by asking those kind of questions. One other thing I discovered is sometimes chat GPT will never give you a link, uh, but you can ask the keywords to search that link uh, in other platforms. So there are indirect ways to get a lot of information. Um, that Those are some best best, best practices for the prompt, prompting side. So I see a numerous, I give the background of uh, TDM and there was 
someone asking for the invitation i think we already sent to you uh then another one was does gen ai means based on llm model or other models too yes they are a lot of other models which i explained uh, when uh, when gpt reached plato i don't understand the question if you can give me more insight will uncanny value will be taken into account for stable diffusion similar model i have no clue what this question is to so please elaborate it and i will open for a live question uh, as as i keep going uh, if you can elaborate your questions that would be lovely uh, so that i can make very intelligent let me allow you guys to talk so that i can a um, couple of people who are requesting requesting i can answer it intelligently hi can you hear me yeah i can hear you who is this yeah hi um this is kiran and uh i'm based from san jose and uh, the question i had was um we have this so called uh, agile scrum meetings that happen every day where a scrum master runs the meeting mm -hmm. and if you look at the uh, what happens in an agile scrum meeting it's just basically um you know um, the participants or the developers who answer a few questions with a in a very structured and a fi fixed mm -hmm. format and uh, this guy or this scrum master also responds or responses are also very structured now mm -hmm. can we automate the whole experience and um, you know make the uh, scrum master an agile well i it's all told on zoom calls so can you make an, an imaginary person or user that can run this scrum meeting now if so what kind of models that would fit this am i making sense yeah so you want a, like you don't want a a, a pre-trained response you want a natural response that's what you meant yeah not only that um because the uh the ai scrum master if you design one will mm -hmm. be having all the information on the fingertip in other words if there are like 100 uh, user stories to be completed mm -hmm. and he or she, the the, uh, the ai scrum master will know at the fingertip all the things and whatever the stage just they are how many are pending how many completed who is delaying and how much time that person or a developer is taking it it's so magical if you can automate this right yeah yeah that um, um so you you want ai to do that task assessment correct the question is what yeah. kind of a model we should go with instead of uh, llm models yeah that can be that's what i was going to say this is not a large language model uh, this can be again uh, simple ai machine learning driven uh, prediction and learning uh, prediction and learning okay yeah, it yeah. could be uh supervised learning some kind yeah, of supervised yeah learning. supervised or yeah, yeah it exactly falls there generative is content generation fine tuning and finding the answer based on the feed you gave to it and can be combo model too by the way it can give you suggestion gotcha, gotcha. it can give you predictions reading predictions it can tell you these are the five steps if you are delayed in the project to take those kind of things you can do a good combined model out of it but if you are gotcha. trying to take a intelligent dashboard which i'm thinking and you want to make it more intelligent that will be falling in the predictive modeling side yeah so yeah basically the word is spoken yeah, there is a resource which is always delaying his task and quality is drop right based Correct. on this task resource you can literally predict the trend of this person working and then also tap into large language model with that persona give him some feedback and recommendation how to correct okay. so i hope it was helpful. that's correct now and the second question is um you know the holy grail of uh, llm mm -hmm. and which is how to make your llm um you you know any of these standard llms or uh, you know gpt or in any other such model mm -hmm. to look up at our own um, private data and not look at the entire world data in other words how to make the llms run on our custom databases i mean yes. this is where the effort is going on everywhere i might be asking a very silly question you know no, 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 awesome. i have a presentation and i have i have an answer for you we have done this uh, okay so you will see it coming 
I just wanted to warm everyone so that you know we have some interaction rather than I talking to myself. So thank you, Ankit. This was helpful. But I have a full half an hour more presentation, and you'll get all the answers you need for sure. Perfect. Thank. You. And we can extend it as long as you guys want it. No problem. The whole goal is to have a communication and learning from each other. So the yeah, next this is really thing, going great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So the next thing is I'm going to uh, tap into now uh, the B2B side of it. This was concept building. So as a company, we do uh, B2B consulting, product building, and platform. That's what we do. And we also have our preferred way of working is joint venture partnerships. If you are a medical um, uh, educational group, real estate group, uh, we like to handshake because all we do good is AI. So if you are a real estate, which we build a lot of platforms, uh, we like to partner with you. So these are a couple of the platforms which we have built. Uh, real estate AI uh, from uh, is, is, is executed in Singapore, Thailand, Cambodia. Uh, Rehab AI, which is in App Store right now, and Fashion AI, a couple of the popular ones, but we did a lot of other things with the US Navy GE, so, which is not a, what you call product, but it was pure consulting. So a scenario of an organization on the Gen AI side will look something like, uh, like this, where they have their team, everything is happening, and some intelligent, like as a um, Ankit was saying that he wants to build something like this for his organization and a frequent dashboard, frequent performance, q &A, these are basically conversational bots which can take your existing data, uh, existing website and customize the response based on uh, what you guys do. We build something around that. So one of the things we do is build custom AI solution, ROI focused, uh, innovation and ethical practices are already, we are very innovative and we consider all those things. We have a high-end research team. We are partners with here Chapman University to get more PhDs if we need, but we have a couple of them on board. Data scientists and NLP engineers. The standard uh, AI process, this is not Gen AI process for people who are trying to make decision which direction to go. Uh, we do data collection, pre-processing, modeling, evaluation, and deployment. Uh, with Gen AI, a lot of things have more much better. Um, in terms of data collection and prep, it has become more better because of semantic and synthetic way to look at data. Modeling is what kind of business problem you are solving. Is it a classifier? Is it a regression model? Is it a cross-function? Those kind of things. And evaluation. So it's a standard process like if you are from the software world side, like your SDLC or waterfall method, this is the AI development method. Gen AI, this is the one which is exciting and a lot of people may be new to this one. So in Gen AI, uh, how to build a large language model and application around it, we have few stages it goes through. Um, number one is uh, feedback, LLM, retrieval, prompt engineering, as I was explaining more but let me go detail diagram. So this is a process where as, uh, as Ankit was asking, he want to, uh, sorry. He want to use his enterprise or his own personal data and not let anyone know about it or, or has to be, is not disclosed or has to be kept private. So that input goes into pre-processing phase, uh, which, and from there it goes into embedding and vectorized database then it taps into, sorry, mouse is killing. Then it uh, gets into the uh, LLM and from there it comes back by the filtration of large language model, whatever template you pick to the bot and the user. So what's happening from the technology point of view, you have a PDF or you have a bunch of PDF, you split them into a uh, little chunk the document uh, we call splitter and you vectorize the document into a vector data set which are numbers and then you will add some kind of a top layer to understand the indexing part if you want to you don't need to uh, on that document so you have one one 100 uh, pdf and you are just you can chunk by line you can chunk by paragraph you can chunk by page however you chunk it 
you if you want to maintain the relationship of chunking there's one choice you have it but uh, if you don't do, do it it's not a problem so that's the first part when you get the input uh, in the data then what you do is you vectorize that that input split and then you put into a, a vectorized database which will take care of embedding so embedding is understanding the relationship of your chunks where it will understand okay section a of the data is related with section b section b is related with section c uh, or page one is related with page two and then you store it in a vector database where it can be stored in uh, cosine similarity in tangent way or in dot product way which relationship you want to vectorize from and then you build something called a semantic search on top of that so when you put an input or output it will go through that data and pick an intelligent portion of the chunk and fit it in the large language model. As I was saying, the prompt is the part of the large language model. So you'll define the prompt template in what way you want to feed to the large language model and what way you want the output. So that's what is happening here. Prompt went to the query and it brought back to the bot. So this is the way you build uh, large language uh, applications. Now, from the enterprise point of view, you have to consider all of it, um, uh, optimization, observation, deployment, uh, uh, cognitive architecture. So these are the components involved. I explained the inter integration component, model IO, retrieval and agent uh, tooling. That's the one I explained with RAC. So if you are trying to build a application around this, so there are few ways these are approach. approach. One is the cost saving way as an entrepreneur. Another is a revenue growth way. So you can automate uh, repetitive tasks, optimize some you know, supply chain or your processes. Uh, you can do some energy efficient, labor efficient work. That's the cost saving. Revenue generation, you can improve the customer experience. Uh, you can streamline the, analyze the customer churns very well and do some uh, some marketing product improvement, optimize the strategy to increase your business value. So all this thing is possible through this process. Value creation, customer AI solution, uh, ROI focus and innovation with ethical practices. As we say, we do this very flawless. Now, where we fall in the enterprise cycle, um, I, I'm I'm. For a mid-sized company or, or very beginner, it's a different story. But mid-sized companies nowadays, they have a vision for themselves and AI vision. So the strategy goal that they take care of is all the first layer is done. We come in the middle where we fast track the AI build. So quick win, strategical use cases, uh, make a you know a prototype for it and then immediately deploy in, in your existing platforms or build the new processes and systems for you. So that that's the middle part we we play very well and very fast. So this is our focus as in uh, TDM. Uh, we, we, if you have an application, if you have a business application running, we can adopt that and increase it. Or if we have to build from the scratch, then we do that too. Another common questions I get is, should I build versus customize? ChatGPT took so many years and billions of dollars, so I will not recommend you guys to start building your GAN at that level. But um, there is Hugging Faces community, which is now building people like us who build their own gangs and GAN models and train them and put there. Uh, you can tap into it and take some pre-trained model and start playing with it. It's an open source community. You can modify it and put back to the open source. So that's smartest and fastest way to tap or you can get into uh, GPTs, which has, uh, you know, some cost into it, and you can tap into those two, if you want to build that way. A uh, couple of the applications we have built, uh, this is an Italian real estate bot, I will show you live, where uh, we are, this is coming in Italian language. Uh, it was, uh, was able to translate before in English, but uh, the customer itself uh, restricted to Italian. So that's why, yeah. um, we, we are showing in Italian language. But what you can do is look up a property here. I'll show you your life too. Uh, create a brochure if you are selling a property. Analyze the investor document and, and you know, summarize all this thing together. Now you can create a flyer 
brochure, all those things. So this is a LLM application. The second one, which I was talking is we built real estate AI for almost four years uh, now. So this is a uh, Phnom Penh, Cambodia, where uh, we have built uh, evaluation process for uh, for real estate. This is how it looks like from the map or backend point of view. Like you have Zillow or Realtor uh, in the US. So you go and pick a map, put the property type you want to evaluate, and it will give you the numbers. The good news here is uh, Realtor or, or Zillow does not have economical data and projections we do. So what we were able to do here is we were, we were able to take something called POI, point of interest, because Asia is way different than what our very well uh, you know, planned cities are. There's shop house, there's a temple next to it, there's a mall next to it, and there's some shit also next to it. So how do you evaluate an asset there? So we took POI, point of interest, what makes that property valuable more than the comparable, uh, which is number of bedroom, bathroom, and this and that. We also did a uh, local economy uh, poll of the data. How good is that region doing? And tied up with the national G GDP growth rate. And we were able to predict very uh, for especially for the land, right? You want to say that it will grow 30% a year or something. Or what's the best use of land? Uh, we are trying to bring this technology in US and we started the pivot process uh, this year. So we'll see how it happens. This has uh, been a great work for us. This one I'm going to again show you live today. Um, this is the medical app. We are using multi-model to understand the skin part and, and what are the recommendations. Uh -huh. It's not final, it's not out there because it's medical, uh, but we are working on it and uh, what kind of preventive care you can do. The third one, which is in the app store, we built it in 2019 onwards, uh, is a drug rehab. It was not generative AI. Uh, we will soon convert to it. Uh, it was a dialogue between a person who is addict and how he stays sober. Uh, so the the, the way we approach it, it was that time for natural language generation, which ChatGPT does right now and ask the right questions rather than responding to it. Uh, it is done through a hardwire way, I call it, uh, through dialogue flow. Now we are trying to change it through uh, Gen AI. That's our third deployment. And the fourth one is a uh, makeup app. We, we build it where you upload a, I have, can show it live today too where you upload a woman face and we will be uh, telling what kind of makeup based on the model she's booking it, she need to get that look. So if you upload this one, she, this app will recommend you what kind of uh, things you need. Um, we are also working on something uh, called Ready No Code Generative Platform, uh, where now we understand uh, the way AI is going is you will not need a lot of uh, like full-time engineers to maintain simple things, right? So we kind of understood the flow in the very early stages. RAG is the one which I, I, I said here is how we, we build the large language model, but if you see more than 80% effort is, 85% is in the chunking, retraining, uh, repurposing, getting the response from LLM, and then from there, fine tuning and customization is about 10%. Reinforcement uh, human interface, which when you chat, do chat GPT, uh, it also learns from, uh, from, from your input. So there's a penalty and reward process. So this is an architecture which plays around in building the applications. So uh, this is the final one. So what we did is, uh, there was interest, uh, um, conflict in the name, what we pick, so kind of graded. We have a backend where we are trying to now base, build a knowledge base, where you can now upload your content like this with different web hooks. URL, uh, we are working on it, it's work in progress. And from there, you can pick the model, uh, what model you want to fine tune with, uh, and then add some users, it will train it and make a conversational uh, app out of it. Um, it is uh, for plan-based and SaaS kind of a model. 
Uh, now, how do we consider ethical? This is one of the things which I get when we do semantic data generation or uh, synthetic. How do we take small data and make applications out of it? So here, what you're seeing is this, an, this is a real data organization, privacy, uh, confidential risk, financial risk. We took that and we replaced with something else. So this is how we are able to maintain that. Uh, from enterprise strategy point of view, um, we help as a management consultant too, where I especially take a role, uh, where I guide your team, lead it through, design it, and possibly hand over to you guys, or uh, built by us. So we have strategic alignment, uh, we have platform built, identified the opportunities together, and industrial. We just recently got a request from uh, uh, I will not name the company because it's not done yet. It's a big one at uh, Rancho Coca Manga, where they are doing B2B for industrial uh, oil and mining side of it. So it's in process. That's another opportunity. No. So that's what we do on the enterprise level. Uh, we can also help you to build your own models, uh, GAN models, which we do flawless. Especially we are, have done the medical one. And now we are doing the uh, makeup one. This is what you need if you are an enterprise or, or thinking about as an entrepreneur to start start something uh, from uh, different uh, models I explained here, uh, labeling synthetic tool wise, but this is what a building ecosystem look like. Just to give you a big picture. Again, uh, ROI versus revenue. Um, this is, uh, I can send you the calculator. Uh, automate and optimize and improve the efficiency versus customer focus uh, outputs can also be obtained. A uh, couple of the technologies which we are very proficient, uh, machine learning, deep learning, and NLP, uh, which is growing crazy. We build, uh, the facial recognition is an open AI computer vision product. Uh, Gen uh, Sober Buddy is a deep learning product and medical which I'm going to show are Gen AI products. That's pretty much it. Any questions? How do we collaborate with uh, your, your organization? I think you, you guys are doing some exciting uh, things. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, as a bit I mean, I'm trained in data science from Berkeley mm -hmm. and have an extensive experience with all these uh, use cases, business use cases with large companies like Cisco, Palo Alto Network and these companies. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, well, uh, you can, I will drop my, my phone number and uh, an email. Uh, we have outreach also, uh, people, uh, my team will outreach to you or you can drop it in the chat and I'll make sure I have it. That's the first, uh, we, we do one-on-one -on -one meetings where we understand uh, our requirements or what, what is in the table, right? And then from there, that's the process. So we'll do first step is Zoom one-on-one -on -one meeting and from there, whatever comes out. Right, Hills? Hmm? Hello? Yes, yes, I can hear you, yeah. Do you have your uh, email address or contact? Uh, yeah. Uh, that you can put it here. Ankit, I'll, I'll definitely send it to you or I'll put it in the group too. Thank you. Okay, let me reload it. I'm going to uh, bring some image here. Will I get wrong? Spirit. So it has two version, dumb version and an export version. I'm doing a five grade version. It will describe very clearly what this is and how to preventive care. It's processing, so it gave you the output. It's short. It did very fast compared to what I'm running on CPU. So you can see that findings and the next steps, physical exam is required. The this diagnosis is this one. 
Um, so those kind of things. If I make it a medical expert level, that was the down version. Uh, the output will be different. So it says uh, very specific skin infection caused by bacteria. Um, it also say impigo, usual antibiotics, pills. So it's very simple, but behind the scene, there's there's another things involved. And this is in like making phase right now. I was able to take even the eyeball. Uh, curiosity was to to detect some some diabetic use cases. It's slow because I'm doing on my CPU on my laptop. I'm running from my local. Yeah, so it gives you all this detail. It says this optical will be have margin. Next step, nickel evaluation. Patient has maintained regular blah, blah, blah. Um, so it gives you a little bit more descriptive uh, kind of a thing. This bot is posted on the GPT itself uh, right now. If I say, give me, it will give me in an Italian. Give me a two bedroom, two baths, 650 square feet. Five. Condo apartment, cellar wine, California. Even I spelled it Irwin wrong. window to print, it gave me the price and everything. So you don't need to go and now Google most of these things, you can get it from here. You can also upload uh, uh, property analyst documents, another thing. Uh -huh. So this is another one. So everybody I showed you guys here. And then this is our, our Asia one where you can select the property all this information fit it here and get the prediction around here so that was few of them what else i need to uh yeah product discovery is here you can upload an image here and run possibly i don't have a makeup image any questions from anyone while I'm doing it. Let me go through all of it again. Uh, Wal Walter White, can you speak uh, a uh, bit about Genetive AI with software development. What can you explore, uh, ex uh, specify a little bit more? So if you're looking this from, uh, uh, can you speak a bit more about Genetive AI with software development? Yeah, if you're looking to get into the J AI engineering side, uh, from the learner's point of view, AI concepts are needed to be learned, uh, like, um, NLP, uh, machine learning, yes, classifier, at least regression models, embedding, um, well, and then you need to learn how to um, understand GAN, understand what it, how it works behind the scene from the learner's point of view. From the software developer's point of view, you use co-piloting if you are software develop, developer you possibly you know it how to use co-piloting uh, from the skill building point of view from application building point of view uh, uh, if you want to build software to test or software to um, to do uh, another code they are very common use cases 
uh, code generators, you can use generative AI to the way you generate the text, you can do code generation out of it. For testing, you can use it for by creating semantic and synthetic data where you are able to create your use cases based on, on the persona you give to the large language model and it will run and automate your test processes. From the design perspective, if you are trying to design an application and you want to particularly do um, some kind of a restructure or re-architect the design, um, I do not know myself you, if you can feed up an architecture and it will pick it up. I have never tried that, uh, but uh, possibly it may be possible to run some simulation around that by diffusion models. So that's what I can say. If you elaborate more, I can be more specific. Question, do you have a list of software that integrate chat GPT or similar bots to your website? Most companies install chat GPT like bot to train on their data. Yes, we have a different kind of, uh, you mean the integration, right? Um, you can integrate anything to, to GPT uh, as long as Zapier integration or one of those tool, tools is allowing it. Uh, it's just a simple API call. Uh, you build your interface or, or you have something intermediate integrator platform. What, in, what is Hugging Faces and Lama? Uh, Hugging Faces is a community where, uh, let me share. Open Hugging Faces. So this is a community where you can have all this. Um, let me see if I can log in. If I remember my password, I'll say. Have my password here. Let's just change. I don't remember now. Let's see. What's the name? Anyway, if you go here on the hugging faces, you see these models. These are some pre trained models built by people like me. Where You're you... not sharing your screen. Sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry for jumping in. No, no, good, good. Otherwise, I was talking to myself. <laughs> Yep, thank you. Okay, so this is Hugging Faces where you can go. This is an open source community where you have models. Uh, people like uh, who have built models, like for example, you want to know text to text image models, you can find that text to image. So different uh, models have been built by, by people like us uh, and they put it here. You can go and literally consume it it if you open uh, for example any of one of them 50k usage shows you all the details what that model is what are the checkpoint what is the code base you can utilize and build application around it stability diffusion is using base model as stable diffusion so oh, sorry and what it does step by step You also get a data set to play, uh, so a couple of data sets. Uh, you get spaces where you can build your own application without hosting anywhere. You can you can host host it too. So that's another. So you have this. Uh, it's not very efficient, but it's a marketplace where you can literally upload your application. They charge you a high thing. I don't know if this is running. But exciting, right? There's a, there's many ways to experiment with almost no cost. It is nice. I'm seeing it myself first time. 
this app. So it recommended if this woman can wear this shirt, you can just take and build an application around it. Uh, it is more involved than it's a diffusion model. It's more involved than, than what it looks like here. You need to know a little bit more and, and possibly put time, but this is exciting. Cool. That was about Langchain and what is the Langchain and how does it apply to Gen AI? Langchain is here. Yeah. Uh, Langchain is a framework, wrapper, software, whatever you want to call, build up, uh, build up for AI application and best way to look at it, Google this. You go here, you get all the uh, documentation. This is the best place I found out, to be honest, where I, I go and explore. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's so simple and very well defined. This was part of my presentation too. So you have a, a way to start with, uh, if you are a software engineer, possibly your focus will be RAG models. And if you are on the enterprise side, deploying end-to-end, -end, that will be what it will be. Uh, model selection from the one I was talking how racks are built. So Langchain is a framework which help you to wrap all this thing around. Go and explore here more. Any recommendation? Good chatbot integration with the website. Uh, Langchain is the place to, to start if you were trying to build it by yourself. And it's a conversational bot. Uh, mm -hmm. But and use the rag model. Like this way it's going, data connector, loading, transforming, embedding. This is all AI, by the way. So you can build and assemble, but to make it effectively, uh, you need a little bit expertise on AI side or take help from someone in Mosaic. That's pretty much it. I think I covered all the questions. Anyone, anything else? Thanks for the LinkedIn Ankit. Uh, we'll stay in touch. If not, then I would love to sign off and spend some time uh, for myself on Sunday. Thank you again for joining and giving me your time. Thank you.